have to begin to engage in a dialogue that deals with difficult topics, stuff that we don't like to talk about. How do you feel about premarital sex? The Bible speaks uh, very strongly about premarital sex. How do you feel about it? As a Christian, how do you feel about abortion? Are you a paid singer? at your church. This is the one TV show on BCU's campus network that will deal with these heavy topics. How do you feel that gay people are treated in the church, specifically the black church? Do you feel like being in a black Greek letter fraternity has compromised your faith? So does that mean that if you're not a Christian, you can't be in Delta Sigma Theta? I'm Judah Dwight, and this is Cross Culture. Praise the Lord, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Cross Culture, the one and only TV show on BCU's campus TV that allows you to experience Christianity filtered through a college lens. My name is Judah Dwight, and I am so excited for today's show. I'm so thankful that you chose to spend your Sunday evening with us, and my prayer is that you're touched, that you're inspired, that you're informed by something that we have going on the show today. Now, you know how we do. We talk about faith topics. We talk about music, we interview people, we handle real life situations that pertain to college Christians. And I'm excited about today. Before we go any further, let's go ahead and pray before the Lord. Father God, we come to you right now, Lord, just saying thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to have a show, God. Thank you for the opportunity to reach people, Lord. I ask a special blessing on today's show, Lord, on our guests today, Lord, on our tech today. And I ask that you just have your way with this show, Lord, God, that you move us out of your way so that you can touch somebody's life. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I'm so glad you decided to join us today on Cross Culture. I know that uh, you haven't seen us in a minute. We have faced more than our share of trials and tribulations trying to get this show up and running. But we are back, and if everything goes according to plan, we'll be here for a long time, right? So you know how we do here. We like to be in the know. We want you to know what's going on, who's doing what, why they're doing it, and how it pertains and affects you, right? So our first faith topic comes from Gunthia, Oklahoma, uh, and it's about a woman named Jessica Eves. Jessica Eves, uh, she's 27 years old, and she was shopping in her local grocery store, minding her business, getting a little cereal, a little egg, some milk maybe. She was going to cook dinner for the family. I'm adding all that. I don't know what she was shopping in there for. She could have been shopping for liquor. But she was shopping, and and she noticed that a man came really close to her, to her shopping cart. And when he moved away, she realized that her wallet was missing. Now, you know, we like good Samaritan moments. This is a good Samaritan moment. So when she realized her wallet was missing, she you know, had a strong suspicion that the guy who came close to her cart had stolen her wallet. So she began looking for him in the store. And so she's peeking down the aisles and she sees him. And immediately when she sees him, she said that the scripture that popped into her mind comes from the book of Luke. And it's the scripture that admonishes believers to turn their the cheek, to not seek revenge, uh, that, that whole do right even though somebody's doing you wrong. And she said that when she thought about the scripture, she was convicted to show him compassion. So she came up to him and she said, I think you have something of mine. And she gave him two options. She said, you can give me back my wallet and I will even go and pay for your groceries. Or you cannot give me back my wallet and I'll turn you into the police. Well, the guy, she said, was taken aback and he paused briefly, but he decided to give back the wallet. And true to her word, she took him to the front of that store and paid for his groceries. Now, here's what's incredible to me. His groceries totaled $27 and some change. Jessica had exactly $28 in her wallet. Like, is that not God? Did God not have his hand in that and through that? And she totally did the right thing. Like, that's so nice. Well, I tell you, I would have had such an attitude with this man. Sir, you just stole my wallet. I'm not buying you nothing, sir. I'm, in fact, we're going to fight when we get outside. But she bought him the groceries, and um, she, true to her way, she didn't turn him in. And you just never know how uh, you can affect somebody. I mean, maybe he'll never steal again. She said that he said that he was, uh, he was so sorry. He said that he was embarrassed. He said that he was broken, that he had kids. So you just never know uh, what somebody's going through and how you can affect them. And that's why it's so important to be in tune with the Holy Spirit so that uh, it can guide you and you can, you can do and act according to the will of God. That was amazing to me. In other news, uh, local news, as a matter of fact, here at Bethune-Cookman University, we just had our homecoming week, which was amazing. Uh, and we were looking at it, uh, waiting to see how this homecoming would be, simply because this year homecoming was put on by the Student Activities Board as opposed to Student Government Association. Uh, in the past, 
the Student Activities Board used to be on the Student Government Association, uh, and now it's its own separate entity, and it took the reins of homecoming, and they have done a phenomenal job. All the events have been wonderful. But of course, I'm biased to the Gospel Explosion, which was incredible. Byron Cage came out, and when I tell you, he put on a show. It was so awesome, and he sang songs like The Presence of the Lord is Here, and he sang one of my personal favorites, Great and Mighty. That song takes me right in, I'm just, Great and mighty. Uh, and the show was opened by Kafir Rollerson and O.C. Jackson, uh, Sharonda Fazian, and myself, which was incredible. I got to uh, do a spoken word piece that I helped to write uh, along with Sharonda Fazian, and we got to perform it, and it was beautiful, it was awesome. And the crowd was live, and the, 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 the musicians on stage. I mean, it was just an incredible, incredible experience. So if you missed out, like you really missed out on a good, on a good, good, uh, a homecoming event. I was excited that he was here, and I will go and uh, I will go and see any of these artists perform again. Now, unfortunately, while Byron Cage was doing his thing on our stage, Kanye West behind was out there in Seattle showing out. Uh, he just recently launched his first tour, and uh, I think it's been five years since Kanye's had a solo tour. And um, of course, he's promoting his new album called Jesus. And of course, this is a controversial album because it's like, Kanye, what does Yeezus mean? What are you trying to say? And as you can see from the, the image behind me, this man has like himself hanging on a cross with a crown of thorns on it. And I'm just like, Kanye, what cross did you get on and die for my sins? Where was I? I must have missed it. And uh, so he just recently kicked off his tour, and the tour sparked a lot of controversy uh, for several reasons. One, the, st the, the concert started two hours late. Kanye, ain't nobody got time to be waiting for you for two hours. I will go home. Give me my money back. Uh, so it started two hours late, and, and the reason, allegedly, is that there was a sound truck, a truck with sound equipment, uh, that got stolen. And once again, I'm just side-eyeing because, Kanye, who steals a sound truck? Like, I don't know, it's, it's spec to me. And so once he came on stage, he was putting on his, uh, his concert, and he was wearing like this series of, of colorful masks that made him look uh, demonic to me. Like, I was like, Kanye, what do you have on? And then the, the, the cherry on the cake. He had a white Jesus lookalike come on stage. And when the, when the Jesus lookalike came on stage, he responded to the Jesus lookalike saying, Jesus, is that you? Oh, shh, and, and, and cussed. And I'm just looking like, Kanye, what are you doing? Then he had 12 women dressed in white, supposedly imitating the disciples, the 12 disciples come on stage. And it was just weird and it was creepy. And Kanye, I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm kind of over the, the whole I am God thing. That's actually a title uh, of one of the tracks on his album. I'm over it, I'm over the shock factor. I'm over the, I'm trying to, to, to surprise you guys with my antics and my stunts. You know, it's like Kanye, you're too talented uh, to show out like this and you keep playing with God. I just don't know how much, how blessed you're gonna be. So Kanye, get it together. And some positive news, uh, the Dove Awards just happened. They uh, recorded on October 15th, and I watched it on uh, October 21st. Uh, for those of you that don't know what the Dove Awards are, the Dove Awards are accolades for uh, great achievements uh, done by Christian music artists in the Christian music industry. Uh, so it's similar to like the VMAs and the BET Awards. Uh, it's a really beautiful uh, award show. And uh, this year, artists like Tamla Mann, Tasha Cobbs, Lecrae, Toby Mac, uh, Hillsong, they all took home awards for like uh, best album of the year, song of the year, best gospel song. Um, and so, you know, one of the things that we do here at Cross Culture is we try to expose you to positive music. And so uh, we, of course, were excited about the Dove Awards. And unfortunately, we weren't able to be there this year, but hopefully we'll be there next year uh, supporting all of our artists. So from Cross Culture, we want to send a big congratulations to all the artists that took home awards. And we want you, the viewers, to always support the, the Christian music industry and, and, and just positive music um, in, our, in, in this industry. And speaking of uh, positive music, you guys remember, uh, I think it was the, it was actually the first episode of Cross Culture, and I told you guys to go check out an artist named Molly Music, uh, and I told you to go check out a song by him called Ready Aim. It's one of my favorite songs right now. So you guys remember that, right? And I was just all hyped for him. He's a gospel music artist. Well, I come today to tell you that unfortunately he has made the switch to secular music. Molly... 
In an interview that he did on the Yolanda Adams Morning Radio Show website, he said that he is making the switch because he feels like there is a glass ceiling over gospel music that won't allow him to attain uh, the success that he wants to attain. And then he also made mention of some experiences that he's had that has shown him, and I quote, how fickle the gospel music industry is. Uh, and so he's saying that he's not going to move too far away from his gospel roots, but that uh, he wants to be successful and he wants to... It's just weird, and, and I'm going to be honest. I, I think what, what has happened here is I think that Molly had a, a bad experience in the gospel industry. I think that he, uh, he realized that the gospel music industry isn't perfect, that just because you sing gospel music or preach doesn't mean that you're going to do right. Uh, so I think he's had a bad experience, and I think around the same time, somebody made him an offer uh, that would perhaps make him more money, uh, expose him to more people, uh, basically help him come up in the world. And I think that he made the decision out of his feelings. And so he signed with Akon, and... Um, I'm just not sure what's going to happen uh, with his music. I'm, I'm, I'm concerned. And I have to be honest with you, Molly. I don't think this is the right decision for you. So, um, viewers, y'all keep Brother Molly in your prayers. Pray for Kanye, too, because, I mean, the, the music business, the, the entertainment business, um, I think it has the potential to tear people away from their walks with Christ and um, really, really uh, lead people to make some bad, bad decisions. So those are our faith topics for today. Remember, if you have a faith topic that you would like us to cover or you want our opinion on it, you can always email it to bcu.crossculture at gmail.com. That's bcu, period, C-R-O-S-S-C-U-L-T-U-R-E at gmail.com, and we would love to cover it. Now, we're going to take a brief break, but when we come back, we will be talking about the song of the week, uh, which I'm really excited to share with you guys, and we will be interviewing my guest for today, none other than BCU's own chaplain, John Baldwin. I'm so excited, so don't go anywhere. Let's go Wildcats! Want to know what your BCU superstars are doing? It always amazes me how I want to... ...their day, what goes on behind the scenes of their life? Well, check out a day in the life of... Catch us every Thursday at 3.30. Only on BCU Campus TV. It's been crazy from school to doing this and all that good stuff, so... Day in the life. In the life. My name is Jessica Estelle, representing Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated, and we are live in the Dynam Hall, and you're watching BCU Campus TV. Hello, Wildcats. My name is Kiaje Williams, but you can call me Kiki. I'm a psychology major. Um, my organization that I'm in is Hoceris 2 Championship Dance Team Incorporated, and you are watching BCU Campus TV. Shout out to HA2! <laughs> I need a break. Let's see what's going on in Google real quick. Let's look up me. Yeah. What? Including results for sexy beast?
Welcome back, everybody, to Cross Culture, the one and only show on VCU's Campus TV, where we deal exclusively with Christianity filtered through a college perspective. Now, I am sitting next to VCU's newly appointed chaplain, John Baldwin III. Second. The second. The second. Uh, this man is a mighty man of God. He has uh, quickly become one of my mentors. I sit in his office for hours at a time, uh, teasing him, talking to him, uh, getting advice and wisdom from him. Um, and he has made a huge impact on our campus of Bethune Cookman University. So, of course, I had to have him on the show. I'm so glad and thankful that you are here. He was supposed to be on the show the first week, but <laughs> somebody wanted to, something happened. He couldn't be here. But thank God he's here now. How are you, sir? I am doing phenomenally well, and it is a pleasure to be here sharing with you on Cross Culture TV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm excited. I'm glad we are bringing the Christian culture and a lot of the uh, cultural things that are going on in our community to this campus and to the network. Uh, and I'm glad that you're taking this on, Dwight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm excited. Um, so, I know you, but the viewers don't know you well. Who are you? Where are you from? How did you get here? Mm -hmm. Who is John Baldwin? That's an interesting question. I'm still trying to figure most of that out. I don't know why uh, I asked you before you <laughs> came up here. I am one who is seeking daily to find all that I am in God. Um, I was not always born in the church and everything, but I am one who truly believes that through God, anything and all things are possible. Mm. That as we find our identity in God, God reveals to us that we are greater, more powerful, more beautiful, more talented than anything we could have ever imagined for ourselves. And so as we go forward in the world, it is truly my passion to help other people see that aspect of their lives mm. and to help them come to their full fruition of their talents and their dreams and their goals. And so that's a part of my passion and why I'm here. Uh, it's, and I just kind of a blessing to be able to be here on Bethune's campus. Okay. So now you are the chaplain, and there's another chaplain. He's the chaplain, the dean of chaplains, correct? He's the dean of the chapel. Okay. And so what is the difference between his position and your position? Well, Reverend Allen is the dean of the chapel. He handles a lot of our uh, administrative things as far as uh, some of the executive level uh, chaplain decisions and things like that. And my responsibility is to be on the ground with those who are on the college campus, uh, faculty, staff, and students, uh, checking on those who are going through difficult times in their lives, being available to, to pray, helping to cultivate the spiritual atmosphere and spiritual activities on campus, and uh, just making sure that those who are here know that they are welcome to embrace their faith and to grow spiritually in it. And that's certainly what he does. For those of you that don't know, his office is located in the Parlin Center, uh, right across from the Starbucks. It's a little brown door with a little window in it, and nine times out of ten, the door is going to be open. If it's not, it's because somebody's in there praying, boo-hoo, crying. <laughs> it might be me. You can feel free to kick me out anytime if you need to speak to him. So, Reverend Baldwin, when you got here, what did you see, and what is it that uh, you would like to see uh, happen on VCU's campus with regards to the spiritual aspect? Well, um, I'm glad you asked me that. On October 30th of 2012 was the first time I set foot on Bethune-Cookman University's campus. And I came in for a meeting because we were planning a trip to the Bahamas with some of the students. And as soon as I got out of the car, I could feel the presence of God. Mm. But even more so than that, I felt something pulling on me on the campus. And I was with one of the trustees and I told him, I was like, there's something special going on here. And I didn't have any clue or any idea that a year later I would be on campus serving. But I did know that this was a great place where God was doing a great work. Uh, when I came to campus and officially started working here, I looked around and as I see every day, I see students who are walking around waiting, one, to be acknowledged. Mm. We live in a culture today where people have become so self-centered that they don't take time to acknowledge the people who are around them. And so what happens is, even for those of us who are in the church and serving, we often have the younger generation serving among us, living among us, and they go unacknowledged. And so they don't find a place where they can fit in. They don't see a place where their gifts and talents are being nurtured or invited to the table. We plan things for the youth. We plan things for young adults in our community, and we never even invite them to the table to ask them, what are you interested in? What do you want to do? What do you see in yourself so that we can help to cultivate that? And those of us who are reaching back are often just trying to make many me's mm. And that's not what God called us here to do. For we're not the examples, Christ is. And so as we go forward in the world, it is our obligation, our responsibility, to make sure that all of those who are walking around know that they are loved, that they are cared about, that there's a place for them in the kingdom of God, that they are people who deserve respect, honor, that they should be able to walk around with pride, class, and dignity and be acknowledged for their human worth in the earth. Mm -hmm. And so when I walk the campus, I see just bundles of potential here. And they may be living as a result of many failed systems. So they may walk around a little depressed, maybe sad, maybe with low self-esteem, 
maybe with some contrary or untoward thoughts flowing through their minds, maybe even actions where they've learned to survive in their communities and they don't know how to cut that off now that they're here, but they still carry that potential with them. And so it's our responsibility and my passion to see that every student that we have here not only graduates from Bethune-Cookman with a bachelor's degree, but also graduates with a degree of faith that will carry them through this world and help them to be our next generation of global leaders. Y'all see That's why? why Y'all see why I sit up in this man's office? Y'all see why? <laughs> okay, so I don't know how much you can reveal, but what are some plans that you have um, just for like, say, events and just some things that, that you have planned uh, for the coming couple of years at BCU with the, the chapel um, on, on campus? What do you have planned? Well, what is, we have... Oh, some phenomenal things going on. Let me start with first this Friday. Mm -hmm. For the first time on our campus, we're having an event called Alabaster Box. Yeah. Where in the same way that the young lady in the Bible um, believed that, you know, God was so, so precious to her, that Jesus was so great to her and was so valuable to her that she would take this precious ointment that was held in this alabaster box and break it open and pour it out before him. We invite students to come to the event to break open themselves and to pour out their gifts back to God, be it in spoken word, mime, dance, song, uh, whether they want to preach, whether they just want to share a testimony. We invite them to a time of fellowship where they can just explore those things. Uh, we're starting a new... Wait, what time will that be and where? It will be Friday at, at 7 p.m. from 7 to 9. It's going to be held in the Parlin Center in the Starbucks. Okay. And it's going to be a great atmosphere. I invite all of our students to come out and see what's going on with it. Uh, we started a new group called the Chapel Assistants. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I am really excited about the Bethune-Cookman University Chapel Assistants. They will serve as an extension to the chaplaincy department. Their responsibility will be to um, bridge the gap between what's going on with our students in their lives and what's going on in our office. They are the students on our campus who say, I believe that I have a call to ministry or I just want to learn how nonprofits and churches work. Uh, and so they come in, they learn professional elements of ministry so that they can go out and serve professionally and cultivate their gifts uh, and serve God excellently. And so I'm really excited about them being here. Uh, where We have some plans kind of in the works. I don't want to say too much about yeah, it, but yeah, yeah. we're trying to get some monthly services started in the chapel. Some Sunday services, some Friday night services where we're going to just try to go forward and give it all. Um, so we're, when you start seeing the caution signs going up all around campus, it's, don't, be, don't be worried. It's not construction. It's not because there's a disaster going on. It's because worship is in progress. And yeah, anytime yeah, yeah. worship is going on, you need to be cautious because yeah. something great is about to happen. God is in the building and phenomenal things are going to be changed and taking place. That's all right with so, me. So now you're Reverend, correct? Yes. And what does that mean? Reverend actually is, um, comes from the definition of the word to reverence or to esteem highly. And it comes from the belief that those who have accepted their call and who try to walk in accordance with what God has called them to be in the earth, that they are walking in such a discipline that they deserve to be respected in a higher manner. Um, sometimes we get caught up in titles. Mm. And so there are some churches and denominations who say, we don't call our ministers reverend, but reverence is something you have in your heart. Mm. And so there are many who walk around calling their pastors and ministers reverend, but they don't have any reverence for them in their hearts. Mm. And they even go back to the scripture that says, reverence no man. And so they don't think highly of them at all, uh, but they just carry the titles. It's just a uh, part of tradition. But uh, I seek to first give all my reverence and respect to God yeah. and everything that I am and all that I'm seeking to be. I seek to find it in God. And so uh, that's where the title comes from. Okay. So th that, that, that's kind of, well, I won't say the finished product, but that's where you are now. Tell us how you came to Christ. Oh, God. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Give us the abridged version. Over many mountains, deep valleys, <laughs> walk <laughs> through the valley of the shadow of death. Uh, oh, my goodness. Well, I'll give you this portion of my testimony. I was, I had both of my parents in my home. And although my home was whole, was not broken, it often felt empty. Mm. I had a sister who was a hell raiser. Mm. And so my parents had to give most of their attention to her. And I was often left out and left alone. There were many nights when I cried myself to sleep in the bottom of my closet underneath the clothes. And I first started seeking love and support in the church. And that's where I got the hugs because we didn't touch in our household. And I started uh, growing in my love for God uh, and the things of the church. And I went through many different trials and struggles in high school, even at the age of 12, uh, trying to attempt suicide on two different occasions. One of them, uh, I was on the floor in my house with a barrel of a 410 shotgun in my mouth, ready to pull the trigger. Um, and I had a divine encounter with God that just changed my mind and changed my life. And I started trying to get to God, know God better. 
and to serve God more. Uh, there was one other occasion where I tried pills and it didn't work. And God was constantly showing me that there was more for me in the earth, that God had, had a greater call and a greater purpose for me. And there were people that I was supposed to live with and, and work with uh, to help them grow in the earth. Well, long story short, I got completely sold out on January 28, 2001. Yeah. Uh, I gave God my all and said, God, fill me and use me for your glory. Uh, September 2002, I was preaching my initial sermon. And so this year I celebrated 11 years as a minister of the gospel. Ooh, come on. Um, I have served uh, at Morehouse College where I did my undergraduate experience. Um, at Emory University where I did uh, both master's degrees in the Bahamas. Now we like Emory. We don't care nothing about Morehouse. <laughs> this is Bethune Cookman. Love us all. Love us mm -hmm. all. Uh, and so, but God has just been doing a great work and I don't, I wouldn't regret any decision or anything that has happened or any choice that I've made in my life. For all of it, it's worked to make me who I am today. Mm. I realized that like in music and jazz, even the accidentals were on purpose in God. Mm. And so God had a plan for it all. Praise the Lord. We're going to take a brief commercial break. And when we come back, we'll be praying with the Reverend Baldwin and closing out the show. Don't go anywhere. Hi guys, I'm Banks, my major is nursing and I'm from Ormond Beach, Florida and you're watching BCU Campus TV. It's R.C. Mullins with MillenniumBullets.com. And it's LeVon McCoy, a.k.a. Tani, with Gym Life. And we, we are, are the, the Bully, Bully Team. team. And you're watching BCU TV. Hi, y'all. I'm Joya Ekormadu from Little Rock, Arkansas, and you're watching BCU Campus TV. What's good, everybody? It's your boy, OMG is Chesman, and I'm here to talk to you about my new show called What You Think. It's the only show on TV where we want to know exactly what you think. You feel me? We go out on the quad, we go as forget what he talking about. Watch my new show. Bro, what are you doing? I'm in the middle of a commercial. I'm trying to promote for my TV show. You can't promote for a TV show. I'm promoting for a TV show. What time your show come on? Tuesday at 7.15. My show comes on a Tuesday at 7.15. What's your show called? What you think? I don't know. What's yours? What you think? But Right before we came back from commercial break, we had lost the mics, we had to move the chairs. So I wasn't sure what was going to happen. You got to come back in the frame now, Reverend. You got to come back in the frame. Um, so I wasn't sure what was going to happen, but we're back live. Um, we've been talking to Reverend Baldwin. He is the BCU chaplain here. And um, I asked him, you know, normally we do a song of the day. And so I asked him a song that was in his heart. And it was my ever intention to sing it with him, but I don't know it. So he's going to have to sing it by himself. Just a little clip. What song is on your heart? Wow. Uh, for the past two weeks. I've really been hearing uh, the joy of the Lord is my strength. And indeed, if we learn to walk with God, uh, the joy of the Lord will carry us through even the darkest and most hellacious moments of our lives. And so yeah. I just pray that, you know, that we learn to embrace the joy of God, joy of the Lord, uh, and to let it strengthen us as we go our, on our daily journeys here at Bethune. 
<laughs> so I guess he's not gonna sing it. He he got out of that. <laughs> We're gonna okay. Yeah, give us a few bars. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord. It is my strength. Yes. Praise the Lord. I just thank everybody for tuning in to today's episode of Cross Culture. I thank you guys for sticking with us. Even though we don't have an episode every week, as much as we try, I appreciate you guys. I pray that uh, you have been touched, that you have been informed, that you've been inspired, that something from this show, uh, you can take it with you and use it in your walk uh, and, and, and in your life. Uh, I want to thank my awesome, awesome tech crew, Joshua Cohen, Jaquel Phillips. I want to thank Antonique, my whole crew. They're awesome. I want to thank uh, Professor LaBarber for giving us this opportunity. Um, and like we always say, um, you can do all things through Christ that strengthens you. So with that, we're going to go ahead and pray out. Tune in next Sunday to Cross Culture. We're going to have uh, prayerfully Makola Abdullah, our provost, and the new director of the concert chorale. And I have a surprise for you guys next week, so make sure you tune in. I appreciate you. I love you for watching. Let's go ahead and pray out. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we come before you on this day, and we thank you for each and every student staff and faculty member here at the Bethune Cookman University. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, God, because you have ordained this university to be where it is and to be doing great things in this day and in this time. God, we ask that your mercies and your grace will continue to pour out upon all of us. Bless us indeed, O oh God. Touch our hearts and soothe our anxieties, O oh God. Melt away all of our animosities, God, and help us to live fully in you. God, give us a greater portion of your joy. Now, God, we ask that the same blessings that you provide for this university, that it would bounce from this campus, God, to other campuses in Daytona, throughout the state of Florida, and even to other campuses all across our country, God. Cover college students in this world. Help them, God, to know that the journey that they're on is ordained by you, and that even in their academic endeavors, they can learn to serve you with all of their bodies, their strengths, their hearts, and even all of their minds. God, do it to the glory and honor of your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for coming on. Yeah, Finally, yeah, yeah, you know, no obstacles this time, car yeah. crashes, <laughs> nobody died. You know, we just so glad that that didn't uh I'm happen. grateful to be able to be here, sir. Yeah. It is truly an honor. And I'm I, I don't know why I forget that you're a dynamic speaker. When you open your mouth, I always be like, <laughs> for go you. I would appreciate it.